Welcome Triton Trojans fans, Andy O'Hare alongside Orion Lindler for the Triton Trojans Sports Network as we get ready to travel here to the Caston Crater, I believe is what they called it, um, for our second away game of the season. This one down, two more to go as we'll take on Caston tonight. Triton all time against Caston. Their opponent the last uh, 30 years. Triton's leading that series 13 games to 10. Last time these two teams met last season, Triton came away victorious 42 to 13. Um, tonight, John Harrell's really giving Titan a heavy hand. It's probably due to this, the depleted roster of this cast and team. But you got to give these guys a lot of props out here. You got 16 players um, out there on there for these guys and how they just come out and compete. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough for those guys to kind of come out and not, not have not having the platoon guys like we do. We have plenty of guys that we can battle with. But yet here tonight, we're going to be with a team like that. Those guys are going to be playing the entire way through. Not a lot of subs, so I hope they can stay healthy and be a good football game tonight for us. For us. Last week was kind of a – we need to learn from our mistakes from last week. It was, it was, it was a tough week going against, against that team. That very, very talented, very quick team of LaVille really taking it to us. I mean, we, unfortunately, we didn't cross the 50-yard 50, 50 line. The offense kind of sputtered a little bit. Um, but big thing with these guys, keep your composure, short-term memory, keep moving forward. Uh, and something I read this uh, last night, I retweeted it out today, Coach Brown really – put something on there that really just kind of one thing, you know, this is this speaks to the testament of this guy and what he does for this team. He says, he, and I quote from him, he says, remember your stat, remember your stats don't matter. The only thing that matters is the team, the team, and the team. Play for your brother. What that's saying right there is these guys here need to forget about throwing, throwing running the score, getting, getting their stats, doing what they're doing. Go out and do your job and continue to fight. One thing that I said for these guys tonight, they got to keep battling the trenches. Get that established game, get that uh, running game established. This will get that option in the passing game really to attack to become really lethal and really just attack, which is what this team's good at. I mean, those big those uh, big plays this team's capable of, the intermediate game's there. And let's get that running game going. It's really They'll really get things going. Other thing, key players and seniors need to step up and just lead. Last week we learned we, we, learned, we need to learn um, – not from not why we lost, but how we lost. A lot of there, I mean, yeah, we were getting beat. We had some mistakes, but we needed to kind of dust ourselves off and keep you big enough. That. For me, this team has a lot of time. They have the experience. They know how to succeed against teams that they're going to be facing the rest, of, the rest of the way out. They can buy those three things, continue to work hard and together. To be the sky's the for this group, this town, the group of young men, and what these guys can do will be really interesting. As Cassie's been ready to sit it away, Odolino Shumper back to Angelo, and Ty Orson back to receive the kick for the Trojans. Kick is away, and it's a short kick. Hunter McIntyre's been coming out with it inside the 40 yard line. He's going to start there as the Shrines are with both Snyder and Companies going to come out and get things going. At the 40 yard line, Shrines will have first and 10 at the 40. So we're going to get lined up here. That real offensive line had a hard time against that Bill team last week, kind of on the blitz and everything. Between Boosley, Billy Smith, Rolston, Aaron Stichter, and Caleb Lindler. Those guys, or excuse me, Parker along the line there. Those guys there, there's a lot of talent on the offensive line. You guys can just come together. You notice Lucas Richmond lined up as a tight end spot. Brings on the near side. Shumpert and Orson to the far side. Backfield got Trent Kreft as a snap. We take the snap out of the shotgun. Here we go. Hands off to Kreft. The Kreft at the middle. He's going to fall forward for a couple yards. Swallowed up quickly. And so we get going here. Triton, of course, one and one this season, first game one against South Central. Casting, of course, one and two in the season for those guys, but you got to be proud of how these guys can battle. Snyder's going to work again. Second and eight from his own 42 yard line. Same set. 
There he goes. He's going to run left. He's going to pick the pitch. He's going to come back inside. He's going to work. Keep working. He's got a first down more. Snyder's got the corner. He's going to take off and go. He's going to have men by the class and common. He's going to get pulled down just inside. Just outside the 20-yard line. 22. No one's come down. So there's a Triton first down. It's the kind of things these guys tonight need to pay attention to. Get themselves back and do what they do best. That three-headed monster, of course, I don't like to have my Delano Shumper still favoring that. That leg that he ran to last week. So I think we were on the 42. I yeah, As they send Richmond back out, forcing over here on the near side. He's back in force. And here we go. Chance Baxter's going to see some minutes. As him and Rickens be split out left with Shumpert, Morrison on the near side. Crept in the backfield, and we're going to get. So Ron Brown's going to be his first time out. Well, he was a little bit of confusion there on the offensive side. So we'll get. Great right after that big play by Post Time. That's things we didn't get a lot of last week. That little build team came to play. They really slowed us down. They kept us from doing things that we normally do. Looking at what you're seeing from Cass and all that. This team had a hard time against them. We, they started off against uh, the Good North. The New York Jackson team was playing fairly well this season. Last week they had a hard time with those guys. And they kind of came away with a 56 to 6 loss. But so, but these guys here, you guys are proud. What thought you're doing out there at that point? What that team can do to come out and beat that limited amount of players. It's something tonight that for us, we need to realize that, you know, we get we, these guys are out here fighting. Learn some from this other side. Learn some from the other team. No, believe in ourselves. Do what Coach Brown said. Trust your brother. Forget those stats. Those things don't matter. What matters is the win column and just playing hard for your playing hard for your brothers on the team. If you can do that, good things can happen. As Snyder's going to work again, he's going to have three wide receivers to the left. Orson here on the single side on his right with Kreft in the backfield. Snyder's going to take the snap of the shotgun. He's looking for Orson. Orson's going to break free, and he's going to come back to it, and it's going to fall in and out of his hands. He had it there. So Bo Snyder's first pass of the night's incomplete. The young man had a hard time last week. As we'll get ready to get underway again, as it'll be second 10 from the Comet 22-yard line. Here we are, Andy O'Hara and Orion Limmer here at the Caston Crater. As he's going to run, Shumpert, Riggins, and Baxter to the left. Orson still on the near side, Kreft in the backfield. Snyder's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to try to work that back up that left side. He's going to get met quickly by the freshman, and the freshman, Sam Smith's going to bring him down for a pretty decent game by Bo Snyder. So one thing, like I said, keep that, get that running game going. If these guys can get that running game figured out, the, that passing game, that option will open up big things. Big Those uh, small windows will turn into garage doors for these guys. Be interested what this team can do tonight with that with no Delano Shumper or very limited Delano Shumper. And watching him in warm-ups, that leg is still bothering him. So the near side, we're going to have D'Angelo over here with Ty Orson. Backfield's going to be Hunter McIntyre's going to be in the game alongside Trenton Kreft. Handoff's going to be crept up the middle. He's going to keep it. He's going to pound his way through for a first down. We'll be first and goal inside the five, inside the 10-yard line. Good game by Trenton Kreft, a young man who's a lot of athleticism. Watched him play basketball last season. My first season get to broadcast here for Triton. Young man's got a lot of athletic ability. He can really, for what he, he can really work his way down low as he, uh, like I said, athletic. He can really bang down low with going through the lines. He's a guy you can get. Who can get you some space? Athlete, he can take off and go, but he's definitely a real strong young man who can get through the line. Some of that stuff that you see from him in the basketball court, he will translate here to the here to the football field. As he's going to split backfield, as Snyder's going to take the snap again out of the shotgun, going to hand off to McIntyre, and Hunter's going to get met quickly in the backfield. He's going to fall forward, maybe back to the line. Oh, excuse me, Kobe Mast. He may have fell forward for one, might just be just shy. They're just inside the 10-yard line. Didn't get much. He got back to the line of scrimmage there. So second and goal from the Comet 9-yard line. Like I said, keys for these guys tonight. Watching what, watching last week. That was, I mean, from the first snap of the fumble, from the first snap, and the calls not really kind of going our way last week. It was, it was tough for these guys. But this week, we need to get ourselves, we need to get our confidence back, we need to get our gears back about us because going against a tough Bremen team next week, it's going to be tough. We gotta be calm. We need to prepare. Kreft's gonna get it back up the middle again. He's gonna run his way, and there's a Triton touchdown. Triton Kreft finds his way in from nine yards out. Triton strikes first. 
So the running game up the middle worked good there for Trenton Kraft. A couple big runs really set up things there with the, with the big run for, well, for Bo Snyder. Set up a Trenton Kraft up the middle for a first down, and then he punches it in for six. And we're going to see what they did last week. Like I said, last couple weeks, no Brandon Linker, so no kicker. So we'll be seeing them go for two quite a bit tonight. So a no kicker. So, so Snyder's going to work there out of the shotgun. Mast and Trenton Kraft in the backfield as he's going to take the snap. He's going to hand off the Mast, and Mast is going to try to get in. He's going to get stopped. Oh, he gets back. He breaks away. He's going to find himself in for pay dirt, and there he goes. Kobe Mast in for the two-point conversion. Triton leads 8 nothing. And we'll get ready for the Triton kickoff. Chance Baxter was kicking for us last week. The young man's got a pretty good leg. With the, out the, absence, with the absence of Brandon Linker is a thing that's kind of hurt our, our uh, point after touchdown. But, I mean, they ran the clock down there quite a bit, starting just, oh, uh, just almost three minutes, just under, um, for the two-point. That was Kobe Mast. Three-four, yep. So here we go. Triton will kick off, and we'll get a first look at the casting offense. They had some bright moments there on the offense, or on the defensive side. Let's see what they can do on the offensive side. They got a pretty good sized <laughs> junior quarterback in Hunter Shane Lobb. And it looks like Riggins is going to send it away for the Trojans. Back deep for the Comets is going to be number 80, Grant Hickel. The freshman. As he'll be go. So Riggins is going to send it away. And here we go. Riggins, low line drive kick. Going to be through the hands of the common receiver. He's going to pick it up. He's going to try to find some room. He's going to get brought down by a trio with Riggins gets in there on the tackle along with Jacob Dunn in there as it went through Gavin Hickel's hands. Good heads up awareness by him. Fall back on it. Triton stops him. They're going to get started on their own 40 yard line. And here we go. That dot down. That watch that defensive line. This is one thing I've really kind of really enjoyed watching of this team this year. How Billy Smith can get through that line, really get penetration through that offensive line, and what he can do. Andrew Parker, another bright spot there on that Trojan defense. Uh, Bo Snyder, very athletic. Trent Kreft, they moved him. Looks like he's gonna play a little outside linebacker, opposite of Bo Snyder. No, like I said, no Delano Shump in the back. So Riggins is gonna take his spot with D'Angelo. You're gonna have Verdugo back in as the other inside linebacker. We seen Kreft there last week, so they split him out as Shane Lobb's going to take his snap under center. He's going to hand it off to Albright, and Albright's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe it maybe came away, lost a couple. It's going to be close. And he's going to move oops, he's going to move back a couple yard lines. So it'll be second and long. So it'll be on the 31, the 30 there. So it'll be second 11 for him. Shane Lobb's going to come back in under center. We're a little tight package. Team likes to run the ball a lot. Triton stacking the box. Play action fake. He's going to go. He's going to try to lob it up over, and Orson's going to be there to play. And Orson's going to almost come away with it. Good coverage. Both players were kind of locked up together. Gavin Hickel, so incomplete there. Trying to get the, trying to catch Triton off guard with that play action fake. One thing for Triton last week that was a hard time for him against LaVille was the different option with that multiple offense that they ran. They had a hard time really seeing who was going to get the ball, where they're going to go, if they're going to throw, they're going to pass. That's the big thing for these linebacking crew. The defensive line's done such a great job. That linebacking crew, especially Parker and Verdugo, and those guys back there and the, kind of running them, I would call the quarterback spot there for the linebacking crew really need to pick up where that ball's going so that when those guys get penetration they take eat up those blockers you get right in there and nail the guy that's coming through Shane Lobb's going to send Smith in line it's going to be a double reverse and here we go and he's going to get brought down for a minimal gain that was Jesse Rockwolf so the double reverse there hand off to Albright to, to Rockwolf didn't work and we're going to have fourth down and that's going to send their punt team back and looks like back to kick away the pumps gonna be Sam Smith. Back deep for the Trojans, you're gonna have D'Angelo Shumpert split with Ty Orson. Wind is blowing pretty good tonight from the from the east. So we got not gonna hurt us too bad in, in the game. And here we go. So Sam Smith's gonna receive it at his 20. He's gonna try to kick it away. Short kick. 
Gonna stop just inside the 50 yard line and D'Angelo Schumper picks it up. He's gonna get mad at the 50, changes direction, loses two tacklers. Here we go. He breaks it out to the left side. Here he goes. He's got the speed. He's shown before. There's a flag on the play. D'Angelo breaks free. He's got some, he's got room. He's got the he's got the wheels, and here he goes. He's gonna get mad and he's gonna find a way for a touchdown. And now we got two flags on the play. So hold tight. Don't count that one yet. Yeah, it may be coming back. D'Angelo Shumper showing off that athleticism. It's met by um, Blake Albright there. Cuts, back, goes backfield, breaks free, and finds, his, finds, the, finds the hole, finds the gap, and hits it, and shows off those speed. That young man, he takes off and goes. Shades of his brother there. So we're going to get reset, so that's going to wave it off. As we're going to get figured out, so looks like we're going to call it off. Looks like we're going to get a holding play. So I'd hear from the official what the final call is. So they're trying to get things worked out. Unfortunately, that big highlight play for D'Angelo is going to get called back. And we're going to get started at our own 46, 44 yard line, excuse me. So Snyder will get back to work. That offense walked right down the last time. Let's see that passing game. He can get that figured out. He's going to have Baxter and Orson split out left. Atkins and Connor Pitney here on the near side. But Trenton Kreft in the backfield. Smith gets ready to find his spot on the line. And Uzli the two tackles. Stichter snaps it over to Snyder. Snyder's going to try to fire across the middle. Too high. Intercepted. Intercepted by Grant Hickey. He's got some room. And Ty Orson's going to try to strip it away. There's a fumble. Interception by, Hick by Hickel, and it looks like Orson got back in there to rip it away and may have fumbled it. Bo Snyder off the mark, tries to just force it a little bit, a little too high, and intercepted by Kasten. Who comes away with it? So Triton's going to get another chance on offense as they recover the fumble. So they'll move back, be first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. Good heads-up play by the Kasten player. Grant Hickel, the freshman, stepping in there. Saw that the ball was overthrown. Carried just a little too much. Big thing for their short-term memory. Thing to learn from there is, okay, just reset my feet, get myself set. Snyder's a very experienced, very good quarterback. Guy who, who can really, like I said, very accurate quarterback deep. If he can just settle down and find it, he'll get it. Snyder's going to pitch it on over to Hunter McIntyre. He got, he's trying to find the corner. He finds the corner. Hunter McIntyre's trying to get free. He runs the sideline. Beautiful play by Hunter McIntyre. He goes from the 36 all the way up to the 41. McIntyre, the 15-yard gain, looks like. That's a guy right there. He did. He's going to be got him and Kobe Mass, two guys to watch in the running, as the running game gets kind of underway with no Ethan Berry yet this season. Those two guys are going to have to carry the workload. They're going to have to get themselves figured out with Trent and Kreft to give both, take some of that pressure off Bo Snyder in this offense so he can get some other things done. Pitney and Riggins on the near side. Baxter and Orson out left. McIntyre back in the backfield as Snyder's barking at the play as he waits Stichter's snap. There's the snap. Snyder's going to hand off to McIntyre. He's going to try to go up the field. He's up the center. McIntyre's got the speed. He could go. He's still on his feet. One man to beat, and that's going to be a Triton touchdown. First one of the season for Hunter McIntyre. Triton strikes again. Hunter McIntyre with that be beautiful 41-yard run right up the gut. Takes it in, and McIntyre showing the wheels in that athleticism. Another guy who's got some athleticism in that backfield. McIntyre, the freshman, the, excuse me, the sophomore this season. As a freshman last year in the JV squad, guy who really can battle well, can bang down low with the right guys. Definitely a strong young man, and he showed off his wheels right there as Triton strikes 14 to nothing over Kasten as we'll await the two-point conversion. No kicker. So Snyder's going to come out there. McIntyre, Orson, and Baxter out left. Here on the near side, we got Pitney and Riggins, and there's the snap. McIntyre's going to keep and try, or excuse me, Snyder's going to keep and he's going to run up the middle, and there's going to be another two-point conversion. We'll be up 16 to nothing over Kasten, and we're, we're just early on here in the first quarter, 7.03 left. Unfortunate for that comments. They don't have a lot of guys to get them to get some rest, but you gotta be gotta, gotta be real, real proud of how they're sticking with it and they're still playing hard. I mean, it's we're just getting going.
as well right Riggins' his kickoff. It was a short one last time. Beautiful night for football. Starting definitely, the heat went away, and we've got a nice breeze tonight. Cool, beautiful night for, for a good high school football game here on Friday night. Triton in their home lights, their new away jerseys. Outlined in yellow with camo as, on, as the interior for the numbers. Casting in their home blues. Outlined by red, gray lettering. As we get ready to wait. Last kickoff was kicked down and you saw Gavin Hickel, the junior, went through his hands. He was smart enough to fall back down on it. As he'll be back there, back deep is going to be Grant Hickel. They're going to be kind of squeezing just a little bit because Riggins didn't really send it away as far as you would normally see. But they're going to break. So the running game tonight is really getting established between that Hunter McIntyre run. Along with Trent Kreft's big rumble, nine-yard rumble over here as Riggins is going to send it here to the near side. Going to get received by Hickel again at the 30-yard line. He's going to try to find a way through. He gets through a couple of Triton defenders. He's still on his feet and is going to get brought down on the sideline by Jarrett Gard, the senior, brings him down. So they're going to get started in beautiful field position in Triton territory. For the 40-yard line, they're going to get, excuse me, I think they're going to be just inside the 50, so 49-yard line looks like, maybe the 48. Oh, never mind. Oh, we're just inside the 49, just outside the 49-yard line. So we'll see what they can do. They kind of ran out with a three and out the last time. Looks like a team that can run the, can run a little bit of that multiple set where they can run players in motion, hand it off the inside, pitch it out, reverse, throw the ball as they tried the, tried there, the first time. By Shane Lobb as he gets ready to go again. He's going to send Albright in motion. He's going to hand it off to Albright. Albright's going to fall forward for a few yards. Billy Smith and Parker in on the tackle there. Two guys that were very active last week on the defensive side of the football. Shane Lobb's going to get back under center again. This time he's going to send another guy in motion. He's going to get met quickly, and that's Jacob Verdugo in there on the sack. He may have got a yard, so it may not be a sack. My bad. So he's going to fall forward a couple yards there. Third and seven from the Trojan 46-yard line. Head, heads up play by Jacob Verdugo reading the keeper. That's the kind of thing these guys, this, this um, linebacking crew really, really needs to do a good job of here as early going into the season because, we, like I said, starting Bremen going on, it's going to be a dogfight for us the rest of the way out. And with those guys there, they need to really read that read what that quarterback's doing, what that offense is going to do, read those linemen, read what they're doing in the backfield so they can make the right play. And they're going to hand it right up the middle. Looks like Smith. Or, oh, nope, excuse me, Shane Law's going to keep it. He's going to fall forward for a couple yards. So Shane Lom's going to end it there. So we'll be on fourth down. It's be fourth and four from the Trojan 43-yard line. So will we see him go for it? I think it looks like they're going to go for it. Smith is out there. To get, Shane Lobb's getting the instructions. He's going to go back out. Coach Tony Slocum is going to send him back out. His second season coaching this team. So Shane Lobb under center. Smith behind him. There goes Albright. He's going to head over work left. He's trying to find 87, and he's going to find it short. And he's going to, oh, just had incomplete in out of his hands. Play was drawn up beautifully. Fell out of the hands of Rockwolf. And that will be a turnover on downs. Triton will take over at the, their own 43-yard line, four minutes and 50 seconds remaining here early on, here in the late goings of the first quarter. So 
So beautiful play drawn up by Caston. Unfortunately, Rockliffe couldn't hold on to it for them. So they fall short there. And Snyder's going to step back up. D'Angelo Shumpert, Ty Orson split out left. Riggins and Baxter here on the near side. McIntyre in the backfield. And that big offensive line's ready to go. A Stichter snaps to Snyder, and here we go. Snyder looking left quickly and tipped away by Shane Lobb. Snyder comes down with it, and Shane Lobb saw where he was going, read his eyes like a book, and Snyder was at the heads-up plate, comes back down with it to avoid that turnover. So, like I said, from that drive with the interception, uh, the last drive we had, Short-term memory, that's the biggest thing for a quarterback. And a senior quarterback of Snyder's experience, like he just needs to settle down. He's, like I said, a good quarterback, very talented arm, can move, can run in scrambles we saw earlier in the game. He waits in the shotgun. Here we go. Play action fake to McIntyre. He's looking left. He's looking deep for Orson. He's going to lay it up for him. Orson's got it. Orson's going to take off. He's got nobody to beat, and that's going to be another Triton touchdown. So a beautiful... 68-yard bomb for him there. Orson ran free, broke free from the coverage, lost his guy and took off for the races, and unfortunately, he was gone. Fortunately for us, he was gone. So here we go, like I said, won't see many kicks of these guys. No Brandon Linker yet again. So here we go, Kobe Mass the backfield along the side, Hunter McIntyre, Lucas Richmond on the tight end spot out left, D'Angelo and Ty Orson here on the near side. Man coverage. Snyder is going to hand it up the middle to McIntyre, and he's going to find space, and he's going to punch it in. And we're going to get a flag on the play. So we'll get a holding call, and that's going to come back. We're going to have to take another attempt at it. As they'll move them back. They get started from their 15 yard from the cast and 15 yard line, so they've got a lot more room to work. One thing last week, Triton had a hard time with was penalties. They're going to keep playing here. Snyder's going to look left. He's looking for Orson all the way, and Orson breaks through the coverage. He's going to grab it, and that's going to be a two point conversion. Going to be good again. That Snyder to Orson hookup tonight is working good as we're up now 24 to the casting zero. Casting with a whole host of juniors and just a couple seniors on the team. A lot of freshman dress. Triton, as we said earlier in the season, 16 seniors losing quite a few last season. Someone here needs to step up and be the leader for this team going forward. Like I said, guys like Billy Smith, Bo Snyder, uh, Ty Orson, the senior group, uh, Delano Shumpert, these kind of guys, you want to see the leadership. Even that, I mean, the younger guys. You got Park, I mean, well, Parker's not a younger guy, but you look at guys like him, Jacob Verdugo, a Trenton Kreft, a Hunter McIntyre, Colby Mast, Riggins. I got a, as an older player, they're like these guys, there's all that experience on this team from last season. And that offensive line, like I said, is as stacked as it gets with the guys like Aaron Stichter and Oosley. Another just more just you keep you can name off the names of these guys and how well they work together. Um, they proved it last season. They, when the going gets tough, they get going, and they're going to show they can be a tough out again. Like I said, they just need to believe themselves, just continue to play that hard-nosed football, listen to Coach Brown. This team could do some special things. I, I, I'm, this team, up to me, is the sky's the limit. As Riggins will get ready to send it away back deep. Kicks have been kind of low line drive over here to Hickle the last couple times. As Albright's, or excuse me, as 
Hickle will be back to get it. And here's another short kick. And Sam Smith's going to come away there at the 35-yard line. He's going to work up past the 40. Stiff arms. Works his way back up. He's going to get up just, just on the inside. He'll be at the 49-yard line. He'll get started there. So pretty good run back for them. They're getting some good field position. Shane Lobb's going to get back up under center, get his guys back in. He's thrown a couple, threw a pretty good pass as Rockwolf got himself some separation last time. And that offensive, that defensive line, we're going to see Noah Reichert's going to be in there on the line with Billy Smith and Ralston. Or excuse me, Caleb Wimler. Verdugo, Parker, Kreft, and Snyder, the linebacking crew. Atkins over here, there's a cornerback, and they're going to send Albright right. He's going to stop, and he's going to try to work himself back into that big pile and going to get brought down. And they're trying to work away the ball. Snyder trying to rip it away. And they're going to stop. So Billy Smith in there on the tackle there again. Like I said, that young man can get through the line with the, quick, with the best of them. Quick feet. When that can he gets going downhill, look out, folks, because he is a runaway train. He'll take you out. As he proved last week, he was a guy who kept getting penetration on that line. So that, that linebacking crew can just follow him through. Let me tell you, it would be a long night for opposing offenses. Shane Lobb's going to work. He's going to send Rock Wolf in motion. He's going to get the toss, and he's going to get short gain for him. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Shane Lobb's going to come back and get the instructions as they'll get ready from third and long. So they just broke free into the Triton territory. So third and eight. Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. As Shane Lobb gets ready to take the snap from under center again. He's going to send Rock Wolf in motion. Going to hand up the middle on the option to Smith, and Smith's going to break free. Is he going to get close? And he got met by a whole sea of white. And he may have fell forward. It, will it be enough for a first down? That young man got to love his strength and determination. Now, it's going to be close. Sam Smith, the freshman running back, punches it, trying to punch it close to the first down. It's going to be a fourth and short. Good second effort by that young man. Is they're going to send Shane Law back out. Slocum's going to try to go for it again on fourth down. Closer. A little closer distance for him to work. So Shane Lobb's going to come back in on the inside handoff to Smith as he pulls his way up there. And Shane Lobb's going to look for a quarterback sneak here. They're going to hand it right up the gut. They're going to hand it back to Smith, and Smith's going to try to punch for him. They're going to push the pile, and that looks like it's going to be enough for a cast in first down. Big morale boost for those guys. They fall forward quite a way. Sam Smith showing off that strength yet again for the freshman. Big bright spot for the Comets going forward, and they'll get their first first down of the night. Yeah. So off comes Billy Smith, and on in comes Connor Usley. Hunter McIntyre back deep with D'Angelo Schumper back there. Snyder, Orson, Verdugo, Parker, and Kreft. Along with Cade Nackins over here on the near side. So they're going to run again. Send Albright in motion. They're going to toss it to him. He's going to cut back inside. He's going to work himself through. He's going to break through right past D'Angelo Shumpert. Brought down by Orson and McIntyre. And it's going to be close to another first down there for Albright. As he scampers away for a pretty good game. And it's going to be a first down for him. He's going to get a pretty good 11-yard gain. As they'll be first and 10 from the Trojan 26-yard line as we're nearing the final minute of the first opening quarter here at the Caston. Crater. I'll get it right eventually. Snyder now working on back under center. Backfield Smith with him. He's going to send Rock Wolf. He's going to hand it off back inside to Smith. And they're going to try to run that same play. It worked earlier. Smith's going to break free, and it's going to take two guys to bring him down. That's going to be Hunter McIntyre and D'Angelo Shumper bringing him down. And he gets another big gain on first down. It'll be second down to short of the first down. Got to love the fight of these casting comments here tonight. Sam Smith, Albright, two bright spots here on their drive for those guys. Usley's going to come off, and Billy Smith, the senior, is back in at defensive end. Last 
So 20 seconds, a little under 20 seconds remaining as Shane Lobb's going to work from the Triton 17 yard line, second and one. Here we go. Shane Lobb's going to try to, and it looks like a fumble to snap. And what's going to happen there is the clock still running. That's going to be enough for the end of the first quarter. So short gain, that's going to be end of the first quarter as Triton leads it 24 to nothing over the cast in Comets. But don't count them out yet, folks. They, it's, they're, they're, they're knocking on the Triton door down there. A couple big runs for those guys and pick up two quick first, two first downs back to back. So watch these things to learn for trying to be picking up that picking up that option. They had a hard time with it against Laville last week. They saw some weak points against that running game against the South Central, a team who likes to run the ball. So they don't have the wideouts. So the corners need the safeties really need to really play in and watch that. Watch what's going on because that linebacker crew. You got like a great a great defensive line. Like I said, between Limler. Usley and, and uh, Billy Smith, those guys will open up the open up the line for you, and you can just come right through. Those are three guys, and you got a guy like Parker, who's a very athletic, very good, very good, uh, very good linebacker. Open up holes for him. Verdugo, another athletic guy who can get through the line and make some tackles. Trent Kreps back there playing. They moved him to outside linebacker, playing opposite of Bo Snyder. Guys who can really do do some damage out there. Just need to kind of just, just play with your instincts, play heads up football, and they'll be just fine. No Delano Schumper. We may not see him tonight. Sideline from a, looks like an injury from last week. Had that leg injury. He had a hard time. Was very limited in pregame warm-ups. He's still kind of trying to work it loose over there on the sideline. That's a guy we're going to need next week against that tough Bremen team we'll be facing. And after Bremen, we'll be back. That'll be our third away game next week. Which is nice with a four of our last five games will be played at home. So Comets are going to start off with possession here in the second quarter, trailing 24 points to the to our Triton Trojans. On the line is going to be Limler with Billy Smith and Connor Rosley. Orson's going to be on the far side with, like I said, that and now Kobe Mass is back in there for to play middle linebacker with Parker. Trent and Kreft here on the near side with Caden Atkins, McIntyre, and Riggins back at safety. So Ron Brown trying to experiment with some different middle linebackers there. Verdugo had a couple pretty nice plates. Don't count him out yet. Uh, last couple plays, a couple big runs, kind of swap things out, bringing in some different legs. As Colby Mass is back there at middle linebacker, and Shane Lobb's going to get back to work on the Trojan 17-yard line, third and one. Shane Lobb's going to hand it up. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to try to push the pile. He's going to work, and that young man is going to try to go through with that Triton defensive line with a final push. May not be enough. It's going to be close, and they're going to call it fourth down. Just missed this. It'll be fourth and inches from the 17-yard line. So the 16, so. So they're going to change it. It's going to be a first down. He remeasures. So there's another first down. Three first downs in this drive for the casting comments all through the, all off the ground. Shane between Shane Lobb, Smith, and Albright. Those three guys have punched it through for those, punched it through for their ticket. Trying to find pay dirt here in the second quarter. They're gonna line back up on the Triton 16 yard line. Triton stacking the box again. Albright's gonna go motion, gonna toss, he's gonna rework his direction, misdirection. He's gonna work back on the outside and he's gonna get brought down by Billy Smith and Andrew Parker. As he goes over, a helmet comes off. As they sent Albright, as Albright tried to dive forward and went airborne, lost his helmet. That's going to make him come out here for a play. As they're waiting, and here they go. They have to take him out with the helmet coming off. They got to pull a player for that. So Tony Slocum's going to have to send somebody in for him. And going in there for Albright's going to be the junior Aiden Sarver. So Albright's got to take a has to be out for a play with the helmet coming off. Timeout on the field. Called by the comments. So the comments are going to take their first timeout for inside just inside 11 minutes. Andy O'Hara here with our Ryan Limon on the Triton Trojan Sports Network. As I've said earlier in their season, one thing about the I really like about watching here. 
broadcast of the Trojan Sports Network is a lot of the different um, spotlights, the Trojan spotlights they do about the, what they're doing with the auxiliary gym, um, things they're doing in the school, with the athletic teams, something you want to take a time. If you get time, t check it out. Uh, they also have some videos from pr previous seasons of some of these Trojans teams and different events. So get time, check those out. Wait for the time of the game to resume here. So here comes the Trojan defense. Trent and Kraft telling us, calling out the assignments. These guys this week need to pay attention, pay attention to their assignments because next week. That Bremen team they'll face is going to be a hard team to go against. And that's still going to, in regards to the timeout, that's still going to make Albright stay out. He's got to wait after this play to go before he gets a chance. And the play clock's going to run. And Shane Lobb's going to go back under center. He's going to send Rock Wolf in motion. Going to hand off to Smith on the inside. Smith's going to break free. Going to run over Riggins. And it's going to take Kate Atkins, wraps him up, and hangs onto his feet. So they're going to come close to the 10-yard line. Five-yard, yeah, maybe just a six. Looks to be about a four-yard gain. So we third and one. Thought they were a little further back than that. So a five-yard gain for him. So third and one. The Trojan seven-yard line. Casson working hard. They're smelling pay dirt, and then see if these guys can get there. Shane Law back under center. Albright back in the game. It's a hand up the middle to Smith, and looks like it uh, looks like Albright Shane Law may have kept it. Nope, hand it off to Sam Smith, and he falls forward for a minimal gain. First down for the So they're going to get a first down. So it's first and goal. Four first downs on this drive. It's just they just keep working. They find a way to grind this this cast and team. Those comments keep grinding as they're working hard here tonight at the crater. Got to be proud of their resilient, their how resilient this team is. Being shorthanded, not having a lot of subs subs in the team, not a lot of guys. As Shane Lum's going to take a snap here on the six, going to send Albright, going to patch it back to another misdirection, and Albright fumbles it, and he's going to fall, maybe lose a yard there. Slipped when he got the ball and started to take off and run, and he lost it. Fell back on it. So it'll be second and goal. So maybe got back just shy of the line, second and six. Maybe lost a couple inches there. As Casson's knocking on the door. Clock's running 9-13 remaining here in the second quarter. Shane Lobb now back under center. Going to send Rock Wolf in motion. He's going to try to he hands it off to Smith on the inside, and it's going to be gobbled up quickly. And Billy Smith goes back up against Albright, trying to read the option. Trenton looked like Trenton. I don't believe Kraft was in. It looked like Limler was in, and Kraft was in there with him on the tackle. Billy Smith, lucky that wasn't a flag on that one. So they're now third and goal from the five-yard line, and Shane Lom's going to hand it off. They're going to punch through, and it looks like Sam Smith's going to get through for a casting touchdown. touchdown. Sam Smith's going to get through. So the Comets fi strike finally, finally finding Pater. They get on the board. Those guys coming away with six points last week. As they'll fall forward for their, they'll work hard. That, that freshman, that's a bright spot for this team going forward. If they can get that roster filled out, that's a guy right there you can build around with Sam Smith. So Albright's going to hold, and that's going to send Caden. I'm not going to butcher his last name, so we'll let Caden kick the ball here. 
There's the kick, and the ball's going to be up, and it's going to be right down the pipe. No good. Had this and just left. Excuse me. Looked like it had. Looked like it had it. So the so 24 to six. They match their point total from a week ago. As Triton will get ready to take back over again on offense. See if Bo Snyder can get some work done. He did it there on the air the last time, firing a 68-yard bomb to Orson. They you know the same as uh, Snyder to Orson again for a two-point conversion on the corner. Then he had a Hunter McIntyre big run by that young man. And the eight-yard gain, eight-yard touchdown run by Trenton Kreft. <laughs> Got to be proud of how these guys are hanging tough tonight for Casson. They worked down and worked hard. Four first downs and then punched it in there when they needed to. But our Trojans here tonight standing strong. Offense is working well. The running game's really kind of coming together. Got to get that kind of get that feel for the running game going forward that way. Like I said, next week against Bremen, it's not going to be it's going to be a tall task. As the next few games are going to play with with traveling to Bremen host and Culver, the team has been fairly successful and then that big powerhouse Pioneer comes in to face us. And we travel North Judson, Knox and then host and went Knox hosting Knox and Winnemac. It's going to be a tough way it's going to be a tough road out. But this Triton team, if these guys can mature and build that confidence, this team and play for each other, this team can do some big things. Back deep for the Trojans is going to be Orson and Shumpert in that short line. You're going to move McIntyre up with Trenton Kreft here on the second line. Baxter and looks like Limler, and I believe that's Riggins on the far side. Parker Mast, I believe. I can't see who the far side is as we're going to wait for Smith. And Sam Smith's going to send it away. And here we go. It's going to be a low line drive kick, and it's going to pass Riggins. Riggins is going to grab it out just inside, outside the 30-yard line. He's going to try to find some room. Here he goes. He's going to try to get through. He's going to get met quickly. He's going to get maybe up to the 40, just shy of the 45-yard line. So Triton will get back underway just close to midfield. A couple low line drive kicks here tonight. So Nathan Riggins will get a decent return there. Start from the 30, got to a 13-yard gain for him. Definitely look for that senior to kind of step up big here. He's done, done some good things as a wide on the defensive back, showing some help there on the special teams. So Lucas Richmond's going to be in at tight end. Riggins on the far side. Here on the near side we're going to have, looks like Keegan Westover. Seen his first action. Snyder's going to work. Here comes the pressure. He's rolling right, looking down the field, and they're going to call a flag. And Snyder's going to try to get through back to the line of scrimmage. He'll dive forward. There's a flag on the flag. There's a flag on the play. So Triton's going to get a holding call. And that's going to move him back a few yards. That Keegan Westaver seeing his first action of the season out here as wide out. Definitely a very athletic young man. This team, there's athleticism all over the field for Tro for Triton. I mean, they have the guys who can do it, who can take off and go. It looks like there'll be some confusion. They're going to start. They move back. It's going to be. And they're going to move them back quite a ways. So they're going to go back, clear back to the 31, the 32-yard line. Must have been a pretty intense penalty to move them back that far. So it'll be first in a long mile, 20 yards. They'll get back to work out their own 27-yard line. Just eight minutes remaining here in the half. Snyder's going to work left, finds Keegan Westaver. Keegan's going to get the ball. He's going to get met quickly and get brought down at the 33-yard line. So get a 13-yard gain there. Seven-yard gain there, excuse me. My wife would... My math's not the greatest, so I'm trying to do it here. I'm going to do my math here. This looks like a 13-yard gain. No, not quite. 
So now they're moving 20. I'm not trying to follow the scoreboard. As McIntyre's going to get to the outside. That young man showed some wheels earlier. He cuts back inside. He's got some blockers. He's trying to get through, and Albright's going to bring him down. Almost. It's, it's going to be close. Hunter McIntyre, a guy who I – a few people I talked to is a guy bright spot for this Triton offense as a running back. That kitty can take off and go, so it'll be third down and short. It should be third and one from the Caston 48-yard line. And here we go again. So Snyder back there with Hunter McIntyre. Lucas Richmond out right. Riggins on the far side. Westover and D'Angelo jump here on the near side. Snyder's going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to try to find that first down. He's going to get tripped up. He's going to stay on his feet. And it's going to take a whole, has to a whole cast of Comets to bring him down. And he'll fall forward. Looked like they had him wrapped up early, but that showed off his strength and mobility and fires his way through for first down. So Triton will find their first down after starting after the big penalty there, moving them back. Richmond's going to come out of the game. They're going to try a different set, give a give cast in a different look here. Snyder receives instructions from offensive coordinator Rodney Eunice. And Snyder's going back to work. Baxter and Riggins out right. West Aver and Shumper here on the near side and Kobe Mast in the backfield. Snyder's going to drop back and we're going to get a fag and we're going to get a False start on the Trojan, the illegal procedure. So that's moving back. So the Triton penalties, yet again, they're going the wrong direction. Get them going backwards. Last week was kind of a hindrance for us. Moves them back. So that's going to move them back 49 yard line. So they move them back five yards. It'll be first and 15. Just inside six minutes remaining here in the half. Triton leading 24 6. Andy O'Hara here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network alongside of Ryan Lindler. We'll get him talking here later on tonight. He's been working hard for us all season, doing a lot of other filming for the school. Really appreciate the work he does. And here he goes, four wide outs. The Snyder's going to work right. Here comes the pressure. He's going to try to get away from one guy. Hickle had him dialed in. He's going to overshoot Baxter, try to throw it away. So smart move there by Snyder. Didn't have a guy going. Try to throw it, get outside the pocket, try to throw it away. Looks like Pitney's going to come in for us. So, so Billy Smith there allowed the cast and player to break through. That's one thing, that offensive line, there's a lot of talent along that line. It's a big offensive line, very athletic group of, very athletic group of offensive linemen with Stichter, Parker, uh, Ralston, and Usley and Smith. So they're going to run four wideouts again, West Haver and Shumpert here on the near side. Mass in the backfield is... Snyder takes a snap. Here comes the pressure again. A lot of, a lot of comments. He's working out of trouble. He looks over left, finds D'Angelo, and hits him the mask. D'Angelo took his eyes off it just for a second. That seems to be seems to be the thing here for these guys. Last week, a lot, a lot of short passes came their way. To worry about taking off and going before they had the ball. Shumpert had a lot of open space in front of him. So like I said, the one thing these guys need, need to keep their composure when it comes to the penalties and the things that don't go our way. Not, not, every game, it's not going to go our way. It's not, we got to keep going out there and competing as Pitney's out, spot, spread out right with Baxter. As Snyder's going to take the snap again. Here we go again. Pitches it out to Hunter McIntyre back in the game. Hunter McIntyre showing off those wheels. He's going to try to work back in. He's working hard for that first down. He's going to come up just short. So a big gain there. Looks like a 14-yard gain for him as he'll be third and one. From the 36, well, maybe fourth and two from the. So be fourth and two, so a big gain there for him. 13 yards. Oh, excuse me, now they're macking up again. So it'll be 12 yard gain for him. So it'll be fourth and third from the cast in 40, the 37 yard line. They're going to go for it here. Same set. 
And Snyder's going to pick it back up. Here he goes again. He's going to try to work back inside. He picks up the first down. He's got some blockers. He's got room. Bo Snyder's going to try to go off the wheel. Stiff arm. Here he goes. He's going to get ran out of bounds by Rockwolf. As he, Rockwolf, good heads up play by him, staying with the game as he got stiff armed by Snyder. Kept going as he falls. As that'll be a first down heads up play by Bo Snyder. As I said, a very athletic, very quarterback can get out and run. Shows off his wheels there and takes off for the first down as they'll get inside the cast and 15 yard line just inside it for another trip to the red zone. Been productive there tonight. Westover's gonna go out of the game. Had a big catch earlier. So Maston McIntyre in the backfield, Lucas Richmond in tight end out left, Shumpert and Pitney out right. And Snyder's gonna get work out of the pistol. Here we go. Hands it off to McIntyre. McIntyre, who's head, ran the ball well tonight. He's going to try to work forward and get it brought down. It's going to be close, just about the five-yard line. So it might be close to second and short, so a nine-yard gain. Hunter McIntyre, folks, keep an eye on him. That's a guy with, like I said, tonight, one thing, first thing I said, establish that running game. Really came out on a lot of bright spots there, like I said, early on in, like, the scrimmage. A guy who could took, take off and run. He showed the last two games. He can do it. Him and Kobe Mass, two guys who can really take off and go. Trent Kreft out of the backfield here for the here the, here for the last few couple drives. As Snyder's going to work again, hands off to Mass, and Mass is going to run it in. Kobe Mass finds Pater for the Trojans for a Triton touchdown. Six yards out for Kobe Mass. So we'll get ready for them to go for two. Is that'll reset? Be interesting to see how they utilize Lucas Richmond, a tall target. Once he kind of gets his football, learns the game a little bit, be a, definitely a good red zone target, short yardage target, big tall player. Snyder's gonna get ready to go again for the two point conversion, four three for three on the night. Here's the snap. He's looking for Shumpert, and Shumpert's gonna try to get it, and he's gonna try to fall in, and that's gonna be a two point conversion. Would be good. So that'll be a Snyder to Shumpert. That's D'Angelo, not Delano. And that'll be again. So that's going to put Triton up 32-6 with 3.42 remaining here in the first half. Andy O'Hare of the Triton Trojan Sport Network alongside Orion Lindler. As we'll get ready to wait the Triton kickoff. So for me, one thing to kind of keep an eye on, especially with um, right now with the score being as lopsided as it is for us, one thing we need to learn is the things we're doing, we need to kind of keep that fundamental, keep that tech – Keep, keep that memory. Keep what we're doing. Really pay attention to what we're doing and learn. That way, going into next week, especially these opponents we're going to be facing the rest of the season, they're not going to be easy. These Hoosier will uh, be after Bremen. We'll have all H and AC conference games. we got to really be playing tough. Those teams are tough teams. We saw what LaVille did to us last week. we got to be able to come out and compete. we got to be able to come out and run the ball. we got to attack. we got to read that, read what the offense is doing, and really just attack on defense. Um, tonight with these guys who are maybe not starters or maybe you can see some action with um, what they're doing. They just really need to learn. This team, there's a lot of seniors on this group. There's underclass need to learn from these guys. Like I said, very talented group, of, very talented group of young men who can really get out there and they can compete. A lot of athleticism, a lot of smart kids. Uh, just got to let, let those little mistakes and let those little things kind of roll off. Short-term memory, keep out going, competing. Keep fighting for the guy next to you because you keep working hard there. I guarantee that hard work will pay off. Whether we see it the, during the game or whether we move going down, going along the, as the season progresses, as we're going to get a new guy kicking the ball, we're going to have Jacob Dunn. The freshman's going to send it up short, and it's going to be a short one, and it's going to be bobbled around. And oh, there's a there's a there's a fight for the football. Looks like Triton may have gotten there last second, but uh, but the comments recover it as it was kind of. So Smith's going to recover it there as the was bobbled. And Triton's going to be back to work on defense as the cast and offense, who went four first downs, went a fairly good distance to get there to get their first trip to pay dirt. So this Trojan defense right here on this drive, Aaron Stichter is going to be in here on the line now with Limler and it's like Reichert's out there. Verdugo back in and the other, the, out, the other inside linebacker spot. Shumpert, Riggins out back. Kreft and Snyder are the outside linebackers. Orson and Atkins on the on the ends. As Albright's going to go in motion and play action fake, he's going to be looking right. He's going to find Rockwolf across the middle for a first down. And Shumpert's going to try to bring him down. He's going to need some help to get him down. 
So Shane Law's pass is going to be a good one. Looks on for a casting first down. They keep moving the chains. So it gets back underway there. So all so Shane so Shane Lobb finding Rock Wolf there. Excuse me. And Ron Brown's going to call a timeout and talk to his defense. One thing for this defense so far this season, it's been a hard time reading those play action fakes. Uh, saw that against South Central. They had a big bomb, a 44 yard bomb over us that game. The running game's the thing with that, especially that option and those, those with that misdirection, had a hard time with those counters. It's one thing that's, like I said, that linebacking crew, this is, they're, they're, there's a lot of athleticism there. Now they just now learn, need to read the, need to learn how to read that offense. Once they get that, it's going to be, it'll be money in the bank for these guys as they can continue to keep playing hard. That defensive line is strong. They got a decent, they got a pretty good secondary. But that linebacking crew and those safeties need to be able to read and back up when it's time to go, especially not having the leadership of Delano Shumpert in there in the, as a safety tonight. So for that young man, what he's doing on the sideline, those guys come off, just be talking to him, be talking to his brother, be talking to these guys, let them know, hey, here's here's what we need to do. You see this guy coming here. That's what that's one thing where that leadership of Delano Shumper can be very handy on that sideline. And like that and the other seniors and other players on the sideline. Listen to what coaches are telling you. And the guys come back in, come back off the field, encourage them, say, hey guys, we're doing good, we're doing good. Keep short term memory, keep going, keep going. So that play there, enough for 15. So they're in Triton territory from the 41 yard line. Shane Lobb after the 15 yard completion. Finds Rock Wolf for that one. They missed a connection earlier, so here we go. So Casson's going to be back at the 40 yard line, all bright in motion. Hands it off to him on the sweep. Here he goes in the back side. Out the 40, back to the 45. Yards to fall forward for the 31. It's going to be just short of the first down on that nine yard gain. So the Triton defense starting to, or Casson starting to gain some traction here on offense. Albright there, the senior taking off and going again. Had a couple big runs for that young man in the last drive. Casson's starting to find some tread here on this drive. Albright motion again, fumbled snap, and it's going to be bounced around. Bo Snyder picks it up. Bo Snyder's got one man to beat. Albright can run him down. He's going to do it, and he's going to do it. And that's going to be a cast and turnover. Triton comes away with it and falls down around near the 40-yard line. They'll get started about, looks like, the 42. Good heads-up play. Billy Smith comes in there, pops it free, and Bo Snyder finds it and takes off and goes for it. 250 remaining here in the first half. Triton's going to take over and cast in territory. Big play there, good heads up play by Bo Snyder. It's the things to kind of keep aware. Fumbled snap, Shane Lobb gets it poked away by Billy Smith, hops in there and pops it away. And Snyder with the heads up play, scoops it up and takes off and runs. If it wouldn't have been for Albright, he'd have been gone. He'd be dancing in the pay dirt for sure. So that offensive line of Usley, Ralston, Stichter, Parker, and Billy Smith alongside Lucas Richmond on the near side. Smith's telling him what he needs to do. Riggins out, looks like Atkins out right. That's no, Riggins. Hand off to McIntyre. The young man's been busy so far. The sophomore breaks free. Beautiful juke move. Works himself free. Garrett Hickel juked him out of his shoes. Works right. Hunter McIntyre, that young man's shoes, I think they're starting to smoke from what I can see up here as he is really gaining traction tonight. If he can do that against the deer down the road, he kind of learns as the season goes, that sophomore is going to be a dangerous weapon for this offense. Orson's going to check in as West Haver's going to go out. So Hunter McIntyre with another big game. They're going to be first and 10 from the Casson 21-yard line. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Here we go. Bo Snyder's going to work. McIntyre in the backfield. Shumper Orson near side. Riggins out right. Richmond has the tight end. Here it goes. Snyder's looking deep for Orson. Orson broke free. He's going to get it. Ty Orson's going to come down with it. And that's going to be another Triton touchdown, 7-9. And that's going to be third. That's going to be another pay dirt for Ty Orson as that young man starting to come to life here in the season. So that's going to be a 21-yard touchdown pass from Bo Snyder. As we'll get ready for the two-point conversion here as we're just outside two minutes. And looks like we're going to try a attempt a field goal. Keegan Westhaver listed as a kicker on the roster. 
So Keegan's going to give her a shot and see what he can do. But pay attention. So here goes that offense line. They're going to set. They're going to shift over. And West Haver's going to get ready to attempt the PAT. Keegan's going to get ready to get set here. Down, and he's going to get it away, and it's going to go. It's going to be just inside the left upright. Keegan Westhaver for his first PAT, the first kicked PAT for Triton on the season. It's going to be by Keegan Westhaver, and that's going to put us up 39-6 with two minutes and 16 remaining here in the half. So Bo Snyder showing off that arm strength, finds, finds a streaking Ty Orson down the sideline for six. So the offense, so like I said, that running game will really do great things for the passing game and the option for this team, what they can do and what Bo Snyder can do. He can get real creative in the backfield once that running game gets going. Can do open up some big things for this Triton offense. Now that, that, now that, off, now that defense just picks up what the offense is doing, those guys who are playing offense are on defense, a little bit of that Iron Man football. But big thing for these guys to keep an eye on. Pay attention to what's going on. Listen to Coach Brown. That guy knows what he's doing on defense. Uh, last season, I mean, you're losing guys like Max Slusser and Drew Stichter, as I've said so far on all the broadcasts so far this season. But then that, that's old term. We're down three games into this season. We need to we need to do play our game. This is the 2018 Trojans. This is in the 2017 Trojans. So once these guys figure that out and start playing with the guys that are with them, that defense, once that they kind of catch up and get up to speed, some good things can happen. Get Delano Schumper back from injury. Ethan Berry, if we can get him back, to get him in the inside linebacker spot. I said Trenton Kraft is a guy who's very athletic. You look at Hunter McIntyre, a guy who can play, draw back and play safety, who plays real well. So it'll be interesting what they can do. Andrew Parker, like I said, a bright spot. Let him in tackles against South Central. Was definitely active against LaVille. Billy Smith and Oosley and Lindler down there along now, that defensive lineman. You throw in Stichter there with his leadership. These guys have it. So as we get ready for Dunn, the freshman to send it away. And it's going to be a good kick. It's going to be back to Sam Smith from the 25-yard line. Here we go. Sam Smith's going to work himself back up. He's going to find his way maybe 10 yards to the 35-yard line. And they'll get some decent field position. They'll get started. This team fell forward for two first downs. The only thing that held them back last time was the fumble by Shane Lobb there on the snap. So it'll be first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Two minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Triton leading 39-6. Andy O'Hara on the broadcast here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network alongside my partner, Orion Lindler. I guess I'm his partner. He kind of runs the show. I'm just here to, here to talk. He does all that work, getting everything set up. I don't know. Got to really appreciate the work that he does and all the time he spends uh, with all these events, the Trojan events, as he films them and gets all the tech stuff set up. Really got to appreciate the work he does. As Rock will fool, and they're going to try to hand it off, and looks like Smith's going to run. Fooled me. It looked like it was going three different directions, and Smith is going to get a first down. That young man, now I'll tell you what, that freshman, he gets – he. He's going to move it again. So I'll tell you what, Shane, uh, Sam Smith, a guy for Caston, doing a real good job in the football. Very strong young man. That lower body strength must be something fierce because he's carried the pile. He can drive for it. It's a very strong freshman. Can't imagine that young man's going to be like when he's a senior. If he keeps playing the way he is, look out, folks. So back and playing safety now is going to be Jacob Klein, the freshman's in. And here we go. And, there, and Shane Lobb's going to get picked up by Bo Snyder for his first sack of the season. So good heads up play by Bo Snyder as he draws back and Snyder comes in from the from the blind side and traps him up with his feet. Good heads up play. That's the kind of stuff they need to learn. Get this stuff. You do this stuff repetitively. Practice that stuff. Really get themselves get that defense. Really get themselves started to get figured out the awareness of whether they're out on the field. The good things will just happen. Because this now and now it's not it's not gonna be a matter of being athletic enough. They're athletic enough. They have the talent. That's been proven. You look at all these guys returning from last season, even though we lost a lot of key guys from last season. It's all there, the talent, the athleticism. The biggest thing is is the mental game, reading that. These, these guys are smart. There's no doubt about it. These guys are smart. They have a great coach, great coaching staff to teach these young men what to do. They've improved each season. They've improved. I mean, and you got all the experience that they have. This team should be able to handle against those big, those tough teams that are going to be playing the rest of the way out. It's not going to be an easy cakewalk. As we learned last season that H and AC, it's not easy. I mean, last season with our school tight end eight wins on the season. See if they can do can they match that production? They can. They have the talent, they have the know how, they can do it. It's just a matter of getting that awareness and kind of learning this team once they get it figured out. Like I said, the sky's limits for these boys. 
as we'll get back underway. It'll be second and 20 from the Caston 36-yard line as from the, after the Bo Snyder snack, the sack. As Shane Lobb's going to try to lose it. He's going to work left, and he's going to lose it again. It was short gain, if any. And Shane Lobb's going to come up hobbling. That's not good for Caston. If that young man can't play at full speed, we got another Caston player shaken up, and that's number 54, Caden Broyette. So that's not a good thing with that depleted roster. It's Caden Broyette's going to come out. Shane Lobb over here. He, Shane Lobb is limping off the field. Broyette's trying to get off the field here. Definitely have a hard time with that ankle. Walks under his own power. Shane Lobb comes back out trying to walk off what he kind of had a small little limp going there. So it's going to be third and 21. Loses a yard there on the keeper. Minute 20 remaining. Clock's running as the time in the first half's running out. Now these Triton linebackers see if they can pick up what they're going to do. Rockwolf's going to motion. Hands it off the middle to Smith, and he's not going to go anywhere. Good heads up play with that Triton off defensive line, opening up for those linebackers, that second wave to come through. Finds Sam Smith and brings down that strong freshman running back for no gain. So it'll be fourth down. They're going to have to send it away as we're inside a minute here. Finds one yard, excuse me. Fourth and 20. So 50 seconds remaining here in the first half as we await what Kasson's going to do here. They're going to punt away Sam Smith, the freshman back to send it away for the Comets. Back deep is Ty Orson. Two guys back here. We got Klein. Looks like Riggins. Back here. So Triton, like I said, you don't hear me say it all season long how, how, I am, how excited I am about these guys and what they're doing. They're going to – so Kasson's going to call a timeout before they send the punt away. You'll hear me say well, what these guys what these guys are capable of. I mean, you guys are watching the tape. I mean, you judge for yourself. I mean, it's my opinion. I know I'm the guy talking. But you look at what Triton's capable of doing. I watched all the film from last, from last season. I watched who they played, how they played. And there's just that group of what how they came together. They can do that again. Um, this team, they, they, they've got it. I mean, they, you know, you watch the experience and watch how they work. Watch how that defensive line works. You watch how the coaches interact with them. You hear how Coach Ron Brown, if we get him an interview here tonight, how he talks about his players. And how, and you listen to Billy Smith in the interview from our first game against South Central, how he talks about how they come together. This team, the chemistry's there. Once they kind of get the get a feel for themselves and get their feet get their feet underneath of them, this team can do some good things. We're going to wait the punt here. Orson's still back. Klein's back with Riggins. They're going to kind of keep a guy kind of back short if the kick doesn't go far enough. Keep an eye because Jacob Klein's a guy who I think could be a pretty good running back, be a good athlete down the road for Triton. As Smith is going to get ready. Here we go inside 25, just 25.3 seconds remaining here in the first half. we got a playoff here. Billy Smith trying to get through, going to get through the front, and Smith's going to send it away here to the right side. Ball's going to fall out just on the other side, inside of the 40-yard line. So trying to get started around the 39. So we'll see what they do here. 21 seconds remaining. With the game kind of lopsided as is, I don't expect Ron Brown to send it deep. As maybe we'll, these guys will get their final, possibly the final play of the first half in. So it looks like they're going to go for the kneel here. So they can walk into halftime. That Triton offense has been on fire tonight, finding, finding ways to score. Hunter McIntyre been the big story there for them. As Snyder's going to kneel it, and that's going to be the end of the first half as the Triton leads at 39-6. And as they get ready to break for halftime, we will here too. As Andy O'Hara will, alongside Orion Lemon for the Triton Trojan Sports Network, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, Triton Trojans fans. Andy O'Hara for the Triton Trojans Sports Network alongside Orion Lindler. Triton leading at halftime, 39-6. Got a little bit of stats for me I got from Trent here. So Triton on the night, eight first downs for those guys. 12 uh, carries, 183, 183 yards, I believe with uh, 
Hunter McIntyre leading the way with 93 of those. 68 belong to Bo Snyder. About 13, about 13 and a half yards a rush per time they touch the ball. 103 yards passing on the night for Bo Snyder. Five of nine. With the interception earlier with two touchdowns. So we threw one, so we had one turnover in the game early on with that, with that interception, and we then ripped it back away. And as they fumbled, we picked it back up. And we're, we're, one, we're one of two out of our third down conversions. Fourth downs were one of one. But then if we take a quick look over here at Cass, and then tonight we've allowed 10 first downs from those guys, 63 yards on the ground for them. Um, not a lot through the air, 18 yards through the air. So for them, total plays. So looking, so so they're playing. They're they're playing hard. 81 81 yards total on the night for those guys. They're still playing hard. Yeah, but like I said, that 10 first downs. Casson is definitely a team that can keep grinding, and they've been grinding out first downs. And with the short yards plays, they get themselves. They try and lose them on that. that they get a good gain on first down or second down there. They really get down there on that third down. They really punch it in because that that running game that they that they possess. They take off. They can go. Sam Smith, that freshman for them, is a guy who just can bully his way through there. Albright's kind of the speed back guy who can take off and go. Rockwell, the guy who's pulled down a couple of big receptions. And uh, can't forget Shane Law, but that young man can do from under center. I mean, he had a fumble early on that Bo Snyder came up and got a hold of. But like I said, look at the scoring for Triton out of their uh, trips there. All five trips of tonight for well, all five of their drives. It's been a touch. It's, it's ended in a touchdown. Look at the way they do it. The eight yards, eight yard score by Trent Craft early on. The 46-yard touchdown by McIntyre, then a 68-yarder from us from or from Snyder to Orson, the deep pass. All those two-point conversions good with the, the six-yard TD run by Colby Mast. Got found find and found pay dirt. Uh, 20 yard touch, 21-yard touchdown from Snyder to Orson again brings our score to 39 to six. As we'll get ready to get back underway as Triton now takes the field. We'll see what Ron Brown and company has in store for the second half. Got to be proud of how these Cass and Comets have competed though with a, with a depleted roster. This team's really continuing to fight hard. And as I usually do every customary every game, I gotta give a shout out to both my kids and wife at home watching, Danny and Caden. They really get a kick out of this, and Danny's been going around town to everybody, anybody she knows, telling them that she's gonna broadcast sports one day, which makes me happy because eventually I'm gonna get tired of talking and that young lady has a battery that won't quit, and Caden is a guy who really likes sports, so I promise him every game I'll give him a shout out, and here they go again for their shout out of the week. Uh, so tips going forward here in the second half. Triton, that biggest thing, the running game's working well. Passing game, of course, always on, is starting to, find its, find, starting to find its gears underneath it. They're gaining traction there. Big thing is that for the second half what the um, linebacking crew can do. That, that defensive line has really opened up space for them. Um, they just need to find that penetration. They need to. They really need to read what these running backs are going to do. Yes, it's confusing, but you have your assignments there. The coach tells you where, what gap you need to face, what, what coverage we're going to do, what to be looking for. And once they kind of get that figured out, they'll some good things can happen for that Trojan defense. As we're still waiting, not seeing Delano Shumper tonight, as he seems to be sidelined with that injury he got last week against Laville late late in that game. That leg injury kind of had a hard time moving around tonight. Couldn't really do the cutting and going like he usually does. As I'm looking across the field, I'm not seeing he might still be dressed. See if he can make an appearance here tonight. D'Angelo had a big return that got called back earlier in the game. So we'll be interrupted. So he's down there. He looks like he's getting stretched. He might may try to make an appearance tonight. So next week going against a Bremen team who's been a powerhouse. They're 2-0. They're facing off against tonight. Bremen's facing off against John Glenn. Try to see if I can get some updates for you there here. So as I said earlier tonight, if you get time, take a look at what the Triton spotlights here on the Triton Trojan Sports Network or Ryan and company making all the videos there. I think you're turned on there. Can you hear me now? I can. Uh, well, oh, that, that would explain it. So as he gets plugged in here. Uh, hello, Ryan. Oh, there you go. See, he's here. He's here. He's heard me talking. He's giving me too many responses tonight. Like I said, really appreciate the work you do out here. I know it's setting up, and, of course, technology, as we all know, is not always, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, consistent. It likes like to throw a few curveballs at you, but that's why I said, like, last week, that's why you're a Hall of Famer at this, at least in my book, because I know if I tried to do this, we, we, we'd be over before the game even gets started. 
hey, hey, as long as we know and the chips are down, we'll eventually get it, get, get the broadcast to you at some point. I mean, you got to look at what – I mean, there's a lot to, there's a lot of factor in with all the network stuff and power and download and upload speeds. I mean, it's in equipment. I mean, I'm lost. Look at all these cords. I, I wouldn't even – that right there goes into an outlet and that nowhere, nowhere the network cord goes, and that's about it. So as, so as we get ready to get back underway for the second half, I believe Triton's going to send it away as they receive the opening kickoff. And that'll be the last couple times it was Jacob Dunn sending away the freshman. So we'll see. And it looks like he'll line himself back up, get ready to send it away. It'll be interesting if Bo Snyder continues to keep playing in the game. They bring in Connor Pitney at some point as they lead 39-6 over the cast and Comets. As we get ready to get the second half underway here at the Caston Crater. I mean, I see I'm going to get it right. I'm, 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 I think I'm going to get it right. I've been practicing. I keep forgetting what it is after I say Caston. So eventually I'll get it. So here we go as Klein's going to send it away from the 40-yard line. As the freshman gets ready to set. No Brandon Linker, so that's going to be See who we can get figured out for a kicker this season. As Klein sends a line drive down deep, and it's going to be bobbled. Casting to pick it up at their own 15, 25-yard line, and here we go. It's going to fall down at the, excuse me, the 20-yard line. Falls down around the 25. So, feed it by Hickel back there. So we'll see what Shane Lobb and company has in store for us here for the opening drive of the second half. See what this Triton defense, what, what they can do. No Delano Shumpert in the game, as I said earlier. Sidelined. As we got D'Angelo, guy's brother out there, along with Riggins, been as the safety. Orson and Atkins split out as the, as the cornerbacks. As they haven't really spread anybody out wide here at Casting yet. They've been running a, kind of a tight, tight set. And here we go. Shane Lobb's going to get to work from first and 10 from the 39 yard line. He's going to work. He's going to hand it up to. Hand up the middle to Smith, and he's going to get met quickly by that Trojan defense. So good heads up play by their heads up play there by the Trojan defense, stopping him for a short game. It'll be second and ten. Got back to the line of scrimmage here, working from the 39-yard line. Sam Smith with a bunch of big runs earlier earlier in the game, kind of from most of that casting yardage on the night. They've had a couple of bad breaks go their way. They found pay dirt after four first downs. They drove right down and got a touchdown. Since then, they kind of stalled a little bit. And Shane Lom's going to get back to work again. He's going to send them Albright in motion. He's got it. Now Albright's going to fall forward for a short gain, getting just shy of the 30-yard line. Albright, with earlier in the game, had a couple had a nice sweep play to the right. Young man who's got a lot of speed, ran down Bo Snyder for the, after Snyder recovered the fumble, it ran him down. So that senior's been a key point, been a key uh, player here tonight for Caston. So they're hanging tight, I mean, close, but that team there, as they showed last year, is Shane Lobb works himself up just past the 30-yard line, be short for a first down. Pioneer, obviously, is going to be a tough out as anybody kind of goes against him. That team hasn't lost a game. Well, they went all the way to state last year and broke through, and so far they're doing that now this season. I couldn't get Bremen's game. I tried looking on Twitter. They didn't update on Twitter yet. So we'll take on next week. Then we'll host Culver and... So Shane Lobb's going to get back under center here. Triton's crowd in the box. Rock Wolf in motion. Going to hand up the middle to Smith again. And Smith's going to try to fumble. And fumble pulled away by Triton. Ball came free. And it looks like Bo Snyder comes away with it. Gets in there and snatches it away. And Triton's going to take back over on offense for their first drive here in the second half. So what we got here in Culver and Knox, who's... Knox is up 9-0. 
So keep a tabs on them as we'll play Culver here in a couple weeks that they'll be one of the games in our final four or five games that we will play at home. Be, we'll play them and then that Pioneer, heavy loaded Pioneer team will travel to North Judson and Knox and Winnemac will be how we'll round out the season at home. So big thing going for us, for us with that home field advantage going forward the rest of the season. As Snyder's going to get to work on the shotgun. Shumpert, Orson out right. Riggins here on the near side. Here's the snap. He's going to work over right to D'Angelo. D'Angelo now is going to get some speed. He's going to work back in. Loses the tackler. Breaks one. He's going to be at met by three. Commons, he's still working through the pile, and he's going to fall forward for a good gain on first down. Big play by Snyder there on the first half. Finds him over there on the near side in the flat. Hits in there, and Shumpert showing off his wheels and took off and go. A lot of athleticism for that young man. And they're going to get to work inside. Looks like to be about the 10-yard line. Be Looks like they will be first and just maybe the 11-yard line looking, looking like. So they'll be just outside of a first and goal. So first down will be at the one-yard line. Hunter McIntyre, excuse me, Trent Crest in the backfield. Guy who can get, Devin, get some, downhill, some downhill speed going. Snyder's going to take the snap, fix the handoff to him, going to look across the middle, going to be too high, intended for. That looks like Lucas Richmond. Yep, that's Luke. Lucas gets his first target of the season right there. Like I said, that's a guy to keep an eye on. Tall target for the red zone, be a good target for Bo there short, uh, when they're in, in the red zone like that. Even short yards, the guy, a big, nice big target. He's a quarterback, it's the kind of guys you like to have. It's kind of your... They say you're a pacifier for most. Kind of got a security blanket there for you to make you feel comfortable. They have a guy kind of breaking free down, running around, big target like that. Snyder's going to hand off, and that's going to be Trenton Kreft. Trenton Kreft's going to rumble his way in for a Triton touchdown. Trenton Kreft from 11 yards out, punches it in for the Trojans, and that's going to put him up again. And we're going to see what they did. We had Keegan Westaver come out and kick a – Point for touchdown last time. As Kreft rumbles in there, and Keegan's going to come back out again. We'll see if he can put another one through the uprights. So he was just inside that left upright, and here's a snap. Kick is up, and it's going to be just short. So no good on the PAT there. And that's going to bring our score, Triton 45, Caston 6. And Caston's going to get the return the kickoff here. Bremen was playing, I believe they're playing uh, John Glenn, I believe. Pretty sure they pretty sure they were. Yes, they're playing John Glenn. They beat Riley last week 42 to 12, and they beat Tippy Valley 34-7 in the first week of the season. Bremen are definitely a very physical, very physical team. They showed that in basketball, how physical that team is. And their football team is no slouch. Definitely a tough out, but be a definitely a hostile place for us to play next week. A lot of stuff for these guys to learn. Kind of going against that team next week, they're going to have to really bring their A game because they're going to run your, they're going to run it right down at you. They're going to play that physical smash mouth, def smash mouth football. It's going to have to, you're going to have to be able to take a hit from these guys. So as we await Klein's kick, or excuse me, Dunn's kick, I'm sorry. Jacob Dunn's going to get ready to send it away again. Had a real good kick last time. Went all the way back to uh, Hickle. So that game's pretty well in hand as Albright gets the kickoff. He's going to try to break through, see if he can find a way through there, and he's going to get all the way up pretty close to the 42-yard line, 41-yard line. So Bremen already has that game well in hand, and John Glenn 0-2. And according to John Harrell, that game was going to be kind of out of hand as it, uh, with their prediction. So next week will be kind of interesting to see how he can kind of handle against that 3A offense or that 3A team of Bremen. I don't know, watching them play basketball. I never got to watch Bremen live in basketball, both girls and boys. It's, they're a pretty physical, physical group of kids. So Stichter, Limler, and Billy Smith along the line for the Trojans. 
Kreft outside linebacker along Verdugo and Parker as the middle linebacker. Snyder here on the near side and the S outside linebacker spot. Rock, Rock, Wolf goes into the motion of the outside. He's going to try to find some room. He's going to get met quickly by a trio of Trojans. And I believe that was Nathan Riggins leading the charge there along with Stichter and Billy Smith were in on that one. Trenton Kreft along with that platoon there as well. And Snyder's going to come out and take a break. So our assuming Ron Brown looks like he's going to give him the instructions. I'm not sure. So he's going to come out. And for him is Kobe Mast. Kobe Mast will bring out that and he'll play that outside linebacker spot. Let's move him over there to the other side. Bring Kreft over here over the, to the left side. Pitney's back with, I believe that's, oh, that's D'Angelo. Riggins over here. So here's the pitch over to Albright. Albright's going to try to break through the offense. Finds his way through. He hurdles, he hurdles Riggins and gets met in the air by Jacob Verdugo. So Albright there carries it for a decent gain. And it'll be, it'll be third down. So third and long for them. And not third and super long. Third and seven. Six minutes and 15 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Casting on their second drive of the second half. Fumbled on the last one. Bo Snyder came away with that one. So we'll see if Ron Brown will let him play any more in the game. Ty Orson's back here, excuse me, with D'Angelo. So Triton showing blitz. Going to hand it off, and it's going to be Sam Smith up the middle. And... So the dive play there pushes out a couple yards. Like I said, you gotta love, you gotta really appreciate the resiliency of this cast and team. How these guys with the with the depleted roster that they have are still able to go out and compete. I know it's hot. I mean, not grand. I've never been in that position, or ever really been in a position on a football field and something like that. But these guys, the strength and just the mental toughness to go out and just play and play hard and play with a lot of respect and poise is is really a big. Uh, it's really a big achievement in itself. Shane Lobb's going to hand it up in the middle, and it's going to be Smith to see if he can push the pile, and it's going to be close. Did he break? Did he break the chains? I don't think he did. It's going to be the 50 yards, so he's going to be short by about three yards. And we're going to get ready to. So the Triton offense is going to come out, and it looks like Connor Pitney's going to come out. So we're going to have a changing of the guards at quarterback as Connor Pitney's going to run the offense. Looks like here from the rest of the way out. So Pitney's in now. Okay. Keep tabs on that. It's the Blue Jays teams that racked up 56 points last week on this casting team. Pitney working on the shotgun. going to hand off to Hunter McIntyre. He's going to fall forward for a short gain. Didn't give him much of an opening there as the half, as the sophomore running back had a hard time finding some room there. Chance Baxter's gonna swap out as D'Angelo's gonna come in. Connor Pitney getting the snaps here in the second half. I'll give Bo Snyder a rest. Big thing to keep an eye on. Pitney's gonna have to learn here. Next season it's gonna be his his group of guys. He's got Westaver and Shumpert out right. Riggins here on the near side. McIntyre in the backfield. And Richmond in a tight end. Here we go. Snap. He's going to look quick over to McIntyre. McIntyre's going to get it on the swing pass. Here we go. McIntyre trying to break free. Fine pass for Albright. He's got some room. He's still on his feet. And he's going to get enough for a first down. <coughs> so Hunter McIntyre gets this halfback swing pass there. Takes it for a first down. As I said earlier, 93 yards in that first half, a couple big runs for him. Young man's got a motor that won't quit. A lot of a bit, very bright spot for this Trojan offense going forward in the years to come. If he can keep doing what he's doing and building and getting, getting that strength, that young man's going to be a hard, hard, hard guy to deal with. As Pitney gets ready to set off again, switch out this setup, and McIntyre's going to get up, up the middle again. He finds some room. He found a window and made it a garage door, and he's going to go for another big first down. Hunter McIntyre running this drive for the Trojans. So 
So he's going to get a big gain there going from the 38. All the way down to the 23, so that 15-yard gain for him. And here we go. Pitney's going to work from the cast in 23-yard line. First and 10, 3.30 remaining here in the third quarter. Pitney takes the snap, hands off to McIntyre again. Feed that young man. Here he goes. He's going to work hard again. He's going to come close to a first down. Hunter McIntyre showing off that strength and athleticism. And that young man definitely a guy going forward is, going to, is a very high-energy guy. Watching him play basketball last season, he showed that off that athleticism, that ability to cut and go. Very energetic young man. Definitely going to be a leader for the next couple of years for this Trojan team. His Pitney will work again with Atkins out right. Looks like we got Westaver and Shumpert here on the near side. And Richmond back in at tight end. Pitney now takes the snap. We're going to get a flag before the play even gets snapped. It's going to be an illegal procedure against Triton. That's going to move us back a few yards. So they'll get set first and 15 from the um, from the cast and 17 yard line. Triton so far in the red zone tonight has been very effective. That offensive attack has been very potent tonight. Like I said, that running game early on, that's going to open up the pass, going to open up the option, really open up a lot of things for this Trojan offense, and it's done that so far tonight. Now, these guys will have to be able to do that against the tough schedule going forward, but this team's showing flashes. They can do it, and they believe they can do it. Get that mentality, get that mental toughness. These guys will be hard to beat. And we're going to get another flag. It's going to be again another another legal procedure against the Trojans. Another five yards. So this will be first and 20. That's the other thing tonight that's been kind of a story for Triton is the penalties. Um, Grant luckily hasn't hurt us on the scoreboard, but against a team like Bremen, against a team like North Judson, Culver, and, and especially a team like Pioneer and all the other else who are going to face the rest of the season, that's going to hurt us. Um, so they're just ready to kind of take off and go, but you got to be able to play within and li limit those penalties. If we can do that kind of stuff there, um, start moving that negative yard, just going back, that's definitely something we're going to need. We can't be giving away those yards, um, moving ourselves back and hurt, shooting ourselves in the foot. Pass quick over to Westaver on the near side. He's going to get some speed, and Westaver's going to take off and go. And we're going to get another flag on the play. Might be holding. Back judge called it there. We're going to get a block in the back from Triton. So another three t three turnovers in a row there. Not a very good showing. So that's going to be another block. It's going to be a block in the back on Triton. So Rodney Eunice is going to talk to Pitney and see if he can get his offense back under control here. And now it's going to be second and 20 back at the 28-yard line as we're inside this two minutes remaining in the – third quarter as Pitney's going to come back out. 20 seconds on the play clock as he gets ready to get back underway. See if he can pick those yards back up. Going the wrong way here. Hunter McIntyre worked him down there. Now the, 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 the three penalties have moved him back quite a, quite a bit. Pitney now takes the snap. Hands off to McIntyre. He's going to work himself back up inside. And he's going to get brought down by a couple. Looks to be Smith and Albright bring him down. As he got ready, got to stop him before he really got that motor going. So he'll go forward. So that'll be second down. Looks like in the 28-yard line, 21-yard line. Under a minute here remaining in the third quarter. Pitney's working in the backfield. Mast and McIntyre. Here's the snap. Pitney throws it over, finds Shumpert. Shumpert's got some space. Jukes loses the guy. Kia's still on his feet. He's going to go up. He's going to take it in for a touchdown. 22 yards in. Pitney to Shumpert. Triton strikes again. So that might be a hookup to look forward to next season. Pitney to Shumpert. And West Davis is going to come back out and attempt a PAT. He's one for two on the night. So Ron Brown giving him some work to see if this is a, something we could use going forward in the season with no Brandon Linker. This might be a guy we might be counting on for the – after we get a score. Snap, low. It's going to be a good kick, and it's looking to be – it's going to be no good. Wide left. 
Had the, had the distance, but not the accuracy. And that's going to bring a score 51 to 6. Triton leads it. So, inside, just a little over half a minute remaining here in the third quarter as Castle get ready to receive the kickoff. Big thing there. The penalties kind of hurt us, but that big play there by um, from to Shumpert there. From Pitney, I mean, you look, well, that's the stuff kind of right there. I mean, you look for that intermediate pass. We got guys when they get in open space, they can they can do some great things. You saw the big juke move as Shumper cut back in field and he turned on the Jets and burned himself the rest of the way in. That's the thing this team can do when they get in open field and they, guys like even like De Delano when we have him, guy you can take off and go. Orson can take off and go. Hunter McIntyre showed tonight he's got some wheels. Mass is another guy. Trenton Craft, Bo Snyder, guys who can just take off and go. They get in space there, they're they're gone. Hard guys to bring down. Smart runners and very aware of where the chains are, knowing where they need to be. They they work on doing that and against these teams like a Bremen, teams against uh, against teams like that, against teams like Culver and Knox and Winnemac, and when we face North Judson for the rest of the, the rest of those conference games and Pioneer, um, who's going to be a tough team, obviously. Th that kind of stuff there is things to build on. These need to log these away in memory, know what they're doing tonight, and not don't don't just go through the motions, but learn from this, learn from what mistakes they do make. And once they do that, this team is going to, like I said, they're, they're, right now they're hard to beat. And Albright's going to pick it up. He's going to slip and fall down. He's going to fall down to his knee. And they're going to call him down, I believe, inside the 30-yard line. Culver hasn't had a penalty tonight. Cast him, sorry. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. Oh, boy, I went through. Wow. Threw too many teams at me there with scores. I know I'm starting to. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Well, well, hey, we need we need those updates, right? So Kasten hasn't had a penalty at all tonight, but this team here is just uh, having a hard time moving the ball here in the second half. They're in the they're in about the second quarter. The team is really moving the ball well against this Trojan defense. So Mass, so they're going to get started from their first and ten from their own 30-yard line. 33 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Here goes Albright, gets on the ball in the sweep, and he's going to break three, get through the secondary. He's going to get up to the 35-yard line. So he's second and five. It's 20 seconds remaining, so it looks to be second and five, so he gets halfway there. Very athletic running back here, the senior for the Comets. Norson's going to come out, so is Riggins. As we're going to see some action there from... And there's a snap. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Triton leads it 51-6. As we're going to see a lot of the depth of Tritons, what they do tonight. As Antonio Cabrera came in there at the end. Got a few other guys coming in. So as we get ready to get the fourth quarter underway, Triton has the game well in hand. You gotta, like I said, gotta, gotta put a hand together for this casting team. It's you know, it, it gets to be long games. It gets to be hard to compete when. You don't have the depth when you don't when you're gonna go against these teams and and the and the, and the score kind of being lost at especially the first three weeks is something that definitely it, it, it can kind of definitely hurt you, but the mental toughness of this team and what they've done has definitely been something to if anybody who from Caster and the, how proud they are of these guys going on just trying to compete that's that, that's an achievement like I said in itself. Triton tonight teams is continuing to learn the defense is starting at sand tall offense kind of stumbled kind of stumbled there a little bit there at the end of the third quarter with those penalties moving them back 15 yards not a good way to kind of get things started out as they're going to switch field here but going forward there's a lot of promise there Lucas Richmond in on defense now I'm going to break him out uh, Antonio Cabrera's in and I believe that's Bryce Coppas on the far side with Kobe Mast Along the line, we're gonna looks like we're gonna have Stichter, Lindler still in there, along with Noah Reichert. Along the line, I believe that's Stichter. So third and three from their own 37-yard line. Casting trying to break for, break through this Trojan defense. As we await their first play of the first quarter, 13 seconds on the, on the time clock. Running up Sam Smith at the middle has been very effective on short yardage as 
they'll take the snap and it's the pile's gonna fall forward just it's gonna be close might just be a few inches short of the first down kind of judging where he's kind of laying down there about a yard so he'll be about a yard shy so it'll be fourth and one so 39 yard line so got a few yards there so they're going to go for it here. <laughs> Tony Slocum's team fighting hard here. And here we go. You got, they got a lot of options back here with Smith and uh, Albright. Can take off and go. Here's the snap, and it looks to be a quarterback keeper. Looks like. S so Shane Lobb's going to keep it and fall forward for a cast and first down, looks like. So there they go. When they're in that short yards deal, Shane Law, a guy who's been able to battle through there and push through. And like I said, guys like Sam Smith and Albright for Cassin have been working hard against this Trojan defense. Parker's still back there at middle linebacker with Trenton Kreft. Verdugo here, he's playing a little bit outside linebacker. Opposite Kobe Mast. Richmond here at cornerback. Looks like Baxter's back there with Antonio Cabrera. And here we go. So we got a first and 10 from their 40-yard line. Going to send Rock Wolf in motion. Play action fake. And Shane Love's going to get brought down by Kobe Mast. Kobe Mast read it like a book and came right through. That's the thing that Triton, as they keep going, they can learn how to read that offense and what the quarterback's going to do. And he read Shane Lobb like a book there and it takes him back down. Now it'll be second and 15 from the 35-yard line. So the reserves have been paying attention on the sideline, listening to coach and everything, what the starters have been doing, and then they find their way through that offensive line as Mass takes him down. As Shane Lobb will get, work, get to work here at the 35, their own 35-yard line. Rockwolf goes in motion. He's going to get that on the sweep play. Here he goes in front of the outside, and coming in to hit him hard is going to be Chance Baxter. Baxter gets in there for the tackle. The senior, or excuse me, the... The junior comes flying in from the outside from the safety spot, read it like a book, and came right through and had him for a short gain. That's the kind of stuff we need to really be working on, reading that from that safety spot, reading the pass from the run, picking it up quick. So when that linebacker crew misses it, our safety's got to be right up in there ready to bring the ball carrier down. This linebacker crew showing some life here with nine minutes remaining here in the game as Shane Lobb works back under center. Third and 11. Rock Wolf in motion. Hands it off. Keeps it himself. And he's going to get met by Verdugo. And Noah Reichert's going to meet him there in the backfield. As he turns around, he gets ready to keep it himself. And he gets met quickly by those two Trojan defenders. And that's going to be fourth down and 11. So fourth down and I believe it's four. Fourth down and 14 from their own 36-yard line. Looks like they're going to go for it. Eight, a little over eight minutes remaining here. Triton leading 51-6. Andy O'Hare here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network alongside Orion Lindler. He's over there. He's running the camera for us, doing a good job. Hands off to Albright. He finds some space on the right side. He spins moves, gets himself free. Baxter's hanging on to him. Just enough time for Billy. I believe that was Billy. Excuse me, that was Stichter come flying in there, taking it down. And that'll be a turnover on downs. And Triton will take over at the 44-yard line of Caston. Get used to seeing Billy up there. I see a five. I'm looking for a five. I'm just looking for Billy. And that was uh, Stichter there. Came flying in to help Baxter finish off the tackle. And Pitney and company is going to come back out. As we're right at the eight-minute mark. Of the fourth quarter, Triton leading it. A lot of positives tonight. Some things we can work on. Always something you can work on. Um, even when you see lopsided victories, when things are like this. And, but there's other things Casson did tonight that Triton had a hard time dealing with. On, so Triton's going to. So Triton's going to take a timeout as Ron Brown's coaching up his players.
So looking at, like I said, things to learn from for these guys. They Things that Cass has done, they had a hard time picking up that with the, the handoffs, the counters, the, the things they were running tonight, the sweeps. They had a hard time reading those from Shane Lobb did a really good job setting those up for them as they, uh, they've done a good job setting it up. But Triton had a hard time that linebacker crew. If those safeties can really read me that second wave of defense coming in there from the linebackers when the defensive line really opens, really holds the line and takes up their gaps so the guys can get through, they started reading those things real well. Like I said, sky's limits for these guys. There's a lot of athletes. We have the athletes and we have the talent. Now we just need to get our kind of get our game plan figured out and just kind of play big boy football and we'll be just fine. And here comes the Trojan off and the Trojan offense is going to get set underway as Rodney Eunice and Ron Brown gives the instruction what they're going to do. See some faces out there we haven't seen much this season. Jacob Dunn's back there, is out there with Coppice. On the line, we're going to have Ralston's over here. He's playing some tackle. Next to him's going to be Reichert snapping the ball, I believe, is Luke Snyder. As Pitney's going to work in the back, it looks like he has McIntyre back there. Excuse me, it looks like Mass back there with him. Here's a snap, finds up to Dunn. The freshman's going to get his first carry of the season, and he's going to fall forward for a five-yard gain. So we're going to get a look at some of our younger players. As they get ready to come up here, second down and five from the Kasten 39-yard line. And we got a Kasten player shook up. It's coming over here on the sideline. We're going to stop play here as the Kasten player got to the sideline getting looked at. Looks like he's got some leg cramps going there. Playing a long game, playing both sides like that. I mean, leg cramps are very big part of the game. Is they're going to sub a couple players, going to sub a player out. Coming in for them is going to be Keegan Dotty, the junior, coming to play some line for him. As I said earlier, we got some different looks coming here. We got Jacob Dunn near side here. We got Coppice in the backfield. Like I said, we also have Jacob Klein, Pitney running quarterback for us. Can't tell. Clock has stopped at 6.43. Can't tell who the far running back is. Here's a snap by Pitt. Takes it. Hands it off to Dunn or Klein. Klein gets it now. He's going to work back inside, and he slips and falls. We got a flag on the play. Slows Klein down. Grass is probably starting to get a little wet out there as he kind of loses his footing. We're going to get a penalty, and Triton's moving back, so it looks like another one on Triton. Get a, another block in the back, and that's going to move him back five yards. So it'll be further than that. So it looks like blocking the black is a – so that's going to move him back to the 47-yard line. That's a big loss. Penalty starting to hurt the Trojans here in the second half. As it'll be second down and a different area code. As they're all back on there in the back in their own area code, their own fit inside their own 50-yard line. Pitney now is going to take a snap out of the shotgun. Going to roll right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to try to work back up inside. Or excuse me, that's Dominic Smith. Smith's going to return. He's going to return. Return field. He's going to go back to the outside. He's got some room. Can he get the first down? He does. Back on the inside. He's going to get met quick and get it met quickly and hard by number 72, Colin Wolf. I missed that change. I thought that was Pitney back there. It was Dominic Smith. I think I'm going to have to get some binoculars up here. Better have him check my eyeglass prescription out again. Oh, there we go. We could do that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd always be nice. Well, it's all right. Maybe someone at home did, and what's this guy talking about, right? Dominic Smith's going to lead his offense up, a young man who looked really good in the scrimmage. Next to him looks like it's Kobe Mast back there with 
Klein. Here's the snap. Klein's going to get it. The freshman's going to roll forward. He's going to get hit hard and then fall forward for a fairly good gain. As there will be now second down. Looks to be about five. As they get inside the 30-yard line. Inside five minutes remaining here. Trite leading 51-6. They're knocking on the door now. Second and six, so four-yard gain there. Pretty good gain on first down for the freshman, a guy who could be a very key contributor going forward. Excuse me. So the other guy over there is going to be Portia Udongo. Will be the other running back split back there with Smith and, and Klein. Here we go. Smith pitches on over. And Klein bobbles it, and looks like he's going to turn it over, and looks like Triton's going to hang on to it. 66 comes in there. That's Noah Riker. Comes in, see if he can salvage the play, and he does. Hangs on to it. Smith with the running over there. I don't know. Certainly feels that way down here. We're having an earthquake. I don't. I don't know. Maybe the the roof the roof's rocking up there. I believe so. So Triton's going to fall back there on the mishandled pitch by Klein. For these young guys here, definitely stuff to be learning as they'll be the guys that we'll be looking to in the, in, in the seasons coming to us. Smith now is going to hand it on over to Odongo. Odongo's going to try to work his way up for a short gain. The young man falls forward about the 30-yard line. Gets a couple yards there. Porsche, a freshman, and definitely a very stout young man. Kind of low to the ground, but be a real good player to have along the linebacking crew. Smith comes in and gets the play from Coach Eunice, and here we go again. Fourth and 13 from the 30-yard line. Inside three minutes remaining, Triton leading 51-6. So Smith now is going to try to work left. He's going to pitch on over to Klein. Klein's going to try to work it back inside. Reese retrace his field. He's got some room. Klein's going. The freshman's going to try to get to the corner. And Jacob Klein finds his way in from 30 yards out. Triton on the board again. So Jacob Klein with a 30-yard touchdown run there. Bright spot for the freshman there. And I put Triton up 57 to 6. And they're going to go for two here. Smith in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Hands off to Odongo. He's going to get met quickly in the backfield. About the time he touched it, as. Aiden Sarver, the junior, comes flying in there, read the play like a book, and just nailed him in there as soon as he got the ball. So 57-6 is the score. Triton's last three point for touchdown attempts here so far in the second half have been no good. The two missed kicks by Keegan Westhaver, but came out and hit his first one. He had a lot of he had distance on the third one. The second one was just a little shy, it was accurate, but he keeps getting those kicks in. He, Start straightening out the accuracy. will be in good shape. As we haven't had to punt the ball yet tonight, the, the fourth down conversion. Team that gave us a goose egg last week, so... Going to be a tall task force this year. That team is just as good as they had last year. They got a defensive back running back. It's already he'd be making his way to West Lafayette next fall. So they got some talent on that Pioneer football team. So Jacob Dunn's going to get ready to send it away. Back to receive it's going to be. Dunn's going to low live drive quick. Albright's going to get it. Here we go. He gets from his 29-yard line. Here he's going to get brought down quickly 
by Anto Alejandro Cabrera. Alejandro Antonio Cabrera. That's hard to name. The last name of the high. That is a hard name to say when you got to say it quick, you know. But he's in there on the tackle, seeing some action here tonight. So been really proud of this Triton defense on the the starters, the the, the backups coming in here tonight. Have really shown bright. These underclassmen playing real well. So we're going to get a different look at the defensive line. In for the game for the Triton Trojans is going to be number 57, Cameron Woolbright, the freshman. is going to see some time at nose tackle. Lindler and Reichert split out to him there. Play action fake. Back over the middle and going to overshoot. Throws it behind. So Rock Wolf just on that threw it behind him there. Had a good look. Had him open across the middle. So had the defense fooled there, trying to go to Albright to the right. Play fake worked well as come off the field is going to be Gavin Hickel's going to come off the field. Looks a little shaken up. Looks to be having – so here's the snap. Handoff's going to be to Rock Wolf. Rock Wolf's going to try to bust through there, and he finds a couple yards on the left side. Minute 20 remaining here. Triton leading 57-6. Stay tuned after the game. We're trying to get an interview with Coach Ron Brown. May take a while, so stay with us. Don't don't go away. Um, we also got our stats coming from across the field there, so we'll we'll trust their math and not mine. So my wife at home is probably laughing at that. All right, here we go again. Shane Lobb. Here we go. Handoff. Finds Albright to the right. He's going to bounce off a tackler. Tries to work free and going to get brought down. That looks like Jacob Verdugo. Verdugo runs him down from opposite field. Brings him down from behind for a short gain. And we're inside 40 seconds here as the time is running out. So the clock's just going to run here. So the play clock's above that. So it's going to let time kind of run out here. Got to be real proud of how these casting players and how well they fought tonight. I mean, these guys, having, having like I said, having that small, having that small roster like that, definitely is a definite um, disadvantage to you. But they played hard. They competed. They worked hard. Got to be proud of how they competed. They definitely gave Triton some trouble there a few times. I mean, granted, you may not see that on the scoreboard, but looking at some of the plays and how some of the things kind of acted, they definitely had a hard time. So that was a definitely earned some earned points there for Triton because Caston really worked hard tonight. So Triton's going to come away with their second win of the season, 57-6 over the cast-in Comets. Like I said, sit tight here. We'll have some stats here shortly for you. So it'll bring Triton to 2-1 and one on the season. So we're going to wait and see. I, I, I told a couple of the assistant coaches that Hey, I want to talk to Ron after the game. Be good to hear from him after the big win here for them as they get ready to face a tough team in Bremen next week. And I'll wait for our stats guy to get up here. I'm looking for him. I don't see him yet. So Triton tonight looking real good on offense. The offense kind of started – the running game really picked up tonight. Definitely for those guys – Big key thing from previous weeks, kind of get the running game kind of going, not looking to do usual guys. But Hunter McIntyre, that young man, really had the high motor going tonight. Him, then you had a few big runs by Jacob Klein there for the young man. The passing game was there, Ty Orson to um, Snyder to Orson, but no Delano Shumper tonight. D'Angelo had a couple really nice plays. So a lot of things to build on. Defense here, continue to learn. I mean, they're – that linebacking crew that's going to come with them as these, these guys mature going along the season now. From here on out, it's, not, it's going to be a tough task every week facing guys like Bremen. Um, Culver's going to be a tough – like I said, every team we face on the way out, it's going to be a tough out for us. So the learning curve is going to have to really curve up and trend upwards and really – it's going to have to get real, really intense here. They're on the rest of the way out as they'll meet here. Like I said, stay tuned. I'm waiting for our stats guy to get up here, and I'll read the iPad and what stats we have for you. Like I said, I can read off here kind of what we had for tonight. Sam Smith, we're here for Cass and had a 
five-yard touchdown run. They didn't have a lot of offense, but when they did, like I said, that, that play where they had that scoring drive, four first downs, they walked their way right down there. And unfortunately for them going forward, they had a hard time really, really competing there moving forward. But for Triton, that offense, like I said, they kind of got going. Um, Casson's been giving up points. Like I said, they don't have that heavy, they don't have that big team like what we do. So for them, they let up a lot of points. But they did have a lot of bright spots where we had some trouble with them. So Triton scored on an eight-yard touchdown pass the first play of the game with Trenton Kreft. And then Kobe Mass punched it in for the two-point conversion. The 46-yard touchdown run by Hunter McIntyre. And then Bo Snyder ran it in. 60, then we had a 68-yard touchdown pass from Snyder to Orson. And with Snyder to Orson again for the two-point conversion. And six-yard touchdown run there for Kobe Mast. Had a touchdown run there. And then it was a Snyder to Shumpert two-point conversion. Then we had a 21-yard touchdown pass from Snyder to Orson. And then Keegan Westaver with his first point after touchdown, the first point after touchdown on the season for Triton. And then we had a 11-yard touchdown run for Trenton Kreft. He punched up the middle. No good on the extra point. And we had a 22-yard touchdown pass from Pitney to Shumpert. And then we had a 30-yard touchdown pass for the first for the first touchdown on the varsity level for Jacob Klein. The freshman finds Pater from 30 yards as he gunned himself her way around the outside of the cast in defense and found the corner of the end zone. So as we wait here for Ron Brown, like I said, stay tuned. Hey, that's important stuff now. I mean, you got you got you got to get those pep talks in right right when you got everybody's attention. I mean, I know they're tired. I know they're gonna have a. So Trent's coming up, so there we go. So I'll get my stats. So like I said, other things to keep an eye on for the Trojan spotlights and all the different events, the volleyball games going on right now. Keep a look, cross country teams and they're in action here this fall. What else we got? We got men's tennis, is men's tennis, is that, is that during the fall? I gotta, th I, I, I gotta think about all my sports in the fall. It's been, it's been a while, I mean, I know in football, basketball and baseball season, softball and all that stuff is, but uh, have a hard time some of these other ones. Do we any scores? We knew Pioneer was kind of well in hand. Bremen had their game kind of lopsided. This team will be facing all the three and zero as we travel to their their place next week. Bremen, like I said, three and zero in the season, really handily beating their teams, scoring no more, no less than thirty four points as they're thirty four, forty two, and forty nine. The scores they've reached, and they haven't let a team score more than fourteen points, and that was tonight against John Glenn. And that was at their place, so they'll host us there at their at their house next week. But Triton tonight, there's a lot of things that they can really build on um, for what they did tonight. But there's a lot of things they can learn too. That defense really had a hard time sometimes reading what was going on um, from those counters and those different those different plays, and uh, they just had a kind of a tough time with that. But things to go forward on. Um, players just kind of keep your head in the game. When we get a couple penalties against us, you got to limit those penalties for one. Um, two, just kind of really just continue to work together and build together. And like I said, I, I, I quoted Ron Brown earlier in the night where he sent a tweet out that I was pretty impressed. You know, this is a, one thing for me, really watching these Triton coaches, I'm really impressed by them, how they work with their kids, how they believe in their kids, and um, just the way that their philosophies and how and how they care for their teams and what they think of their guys there. He said, remember your stats don't matter. The only thing that matters is the team. The team, the team, play for your brother. And tonight they did that. They're going to have to remember that philosophy going forward. Play for your brother. Play for the team. Team, 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 going forward. You know, those stats at the very end, those things get forgotten. Um, you know, wins and losses, but what, how you work together with those guys out there, that stuff there is going to lead, show the players going forward how to how to lead the team, how to play with how to play with one another. And um, as they break huddle, looks like we're going to run watching. This guy's back to me right now. We'll see if we get him up here. Doesn't look like we're going to get Ron Brown tonight on the interview, so we're going to hang it up here for the Triton Trojan Sports Network. Join us next week as we travel to Bremen. And this is Andy O'Hara signing off. Have a good night.